seeing the people who stood up and were positive towards her, and then the 22 who did or said nothing. Um, so what do we call the negative sixes? How do we refer to them? How do they get categorized? We call them bigots. What else do we call them? We call them prejudice. What else do we call them? Ignorance. We call them ignorant. Now, when you call people all of those names, do they say, thank you? I want to be closer to you. Is that what they say? No. What, what happens? Well, first of all, you call them that and to their face. And what do they do? They get defensive and they say, I'm not that. Right? Anybody have a, a, a negative six in your family or in your network of friends? That person that is just not politically correct, you know, that person that says, makes the off-color jokes or makes the sideways comments and that kind of stuff. You have that person? Yeah. One of the things that the, the negative sixes do is they become disconnected from reality. This lady can't have an apple strudel for real? I'm saving the American way by not allowing her to have apple strudel. She has the right to get something to eat, right? But the negative sixes get disconnected because they don't remember what you remembered when we did the five circle exercises, is that we're all connected in some ways. Even though we come from different places, there are similar values that we have that, that bind us together. And also, what also happens is, um, well, I'll come back to disconnected again, um, and that it's a learned behavior. If I see a kid with black boots and, and chains and piercings and swastikas all over and skinhead, what do I know about this kid? I know he wasn't born like that. Because his mother, that would hurt. You know, the chains and all. Ooh. But what do I also know about him? Why is he acting like this? Why is he falling down like this? Because he got something from it. It worked for him at some point. Why is the man saying, you know, well, if she's not wearing a shirt or shoes, she shouldn't. His behavior for him at one point, what? It worked for him. But there's a reason that the dinosaurs are not here. Why? They couldn't change with the time. They could not adapt the way we are adaptable. The other thing that happens with the ne negative sixes, which is funny because I love the negative sixes, because when I see a negative six, I know exactly what I'm dealing with. I don't have to have any question about what I'm dealing with. Um, but the other thing that happens with the negative sixes, is they get to disconnected for another reason. The other reason that they get disconnected is because, first of all, are there any good people in here? Raise your hand if you are a good person. Oh, come on, I got more good people in here than that. The other reason that, that hap what happens to the negative six is, is that good people cut them off. Because I'm, I'm a good person, so I can't have that, that kind of behavior around me and my children. We can, you know, Uncle Joe, you know, is so appropriate and, and we are so good that we can't have Uncle Joe around us. So Uncle Joe, you stay over there. I was watching Animal Planet and um, I don't have cable, but if I did, there's only three channels I would get. Um, Animal Planet, the History Channel, and Cartoon Network. I love cartoons. Cartoon, cartoons. But I'm watching Animal Planet and they're following this pack of wolves, this coven of wolves, and, and they start with their puppies and the, the puppies are, <laughs> And they're wrestling around, and it's just so cute, right? You want to go, go get a pet wolf, you know, after seeing this. And so, uh, so they follow the wolves, and then they become teen wolves, and they're, they're you know, learning how to hunt. And, and finally, towards the end of the episode, they, they go for the hunt. And so they're hunting, and I can't remember if it's an elk or a moose, but they're hunting this, this, this big game animal. And so they're all, you know, uh, doing the things that they're doing, and, you know, I don't know how they do it, but these people are reading the, the wolves' minds, you know. It's, you know. It's like Marlon Perkins is channeling through these wolves. <laughs> Mutual love, oh my hobbies. Okay, some of you guys are not old enough to remember that are you? Okay. And anyway, so so the wolves are going after this elk, and uh, and so one of the wolves does his part, and his part is to jump on the on the on the elk. So he jumps on the elk on the hind quarter, and the elk kicks him, <laughs> breaks his hip. What's now the wolf's destiny? 
There are no hospitals or ER rooms in the forest. So what is going to happen to this wolf with a broken hip? He is going to die. And since he knows that and everybody else knows that he's going to die, what choice does he make? He leaves the pack. Because the pack is only as good as its weakest member. And he is now the weakest member, so he goes off to die by himself. Anybody seen the movie Marley and Me? Okay, I cried like crazy. Right? So, so, so the wolf goes off to die. Now, the interesting thing about human beings is when we get cut off from our pack, we're such social animals that we will find another pack. And what happens with these, these bigoted or, or racist folks, when we cut them off, they, they remove themselves from our pack and they go to find another sick pack. And then the, all of those sick wolves get together and then they start breeding other sick wolves. Now, but, but it's interesting because do these people get, get, get better once we cut them off? No, they get worse. And so, but we're, we're, we're good people. We're good people. It's funny, um, when I was, uh, I was reflecting on some, some childhood things, and um, the kitchen was where we all congregated at, at my home. So my mother cooked there. That's where we did our homework. You know, when Cosby wasn't on, that's, that's kind of where we were, and, and just kind of chit-chatting. And it was just a fun place. And we had the ironing board in the kitchen. And uh, I was... I, Nobody lives at my mom's house anymore. I mean, it's just her. Uh, but she still has an ironing board in her kitchen. And nobody's ironing anything, right? But she just has that in there. And I remember one day I put, out, uh, put my clothes out t for the next day of school and, and all that stuff and didn't really give it much thought. And we were having fun talking in the kitchen and catching up and sharing and communing and all the stuff that we do in the kitchen. And my mom had cooked fish that day. And, um, and it, was, it was delicious. It was when I used to eat catfish. Uh, and you, when you put the Frank's hot sauce on it, it's just really tasty, right? So, uh, so, the, so she cooked fish that day, and the next day when I went to school, I had a severe and serious problem. <laughs> what was my problem? Like my clothes smelled like fish, right? And why did my clothes smell like fish? Because they were in the kitchen, they were in close proximity to where the, the cook fish was, right? So that, that fragrance from the cooked fish got into my clothes. However, there were other clothes that I had throughout the house that were in my closet that did not smell like fish because they were in a far away proximity from the cooked fish. So I want to ask you a question, particularly to those good people. 